Hey, I'm back with another build video, this time of a Kraken, the newest creation from BoltRC.com. This is a unique X-frame since it has a polycarbonate pod to house all the components. It will involve creating some holes and some modifications so it's a little bit harder than your average build. I'll be skipping through the basics and we'll cover frame specific instructions. This is everything that comes with the Kraken 5R frame kit and I'll go over the differences between this and the 5X model. We have the 2 mm thick polycarbonate pod, the custom PDB with integrated 8 volt regulator, and the 4 mm thick carbon arms. The 5X comparison is a thicker pod, PDB, and the arms are slightly wider. Overall, more strength with a little bit more weight. Then there's a huge hardware bag, which has a ton of extra parts in it for almost any configuration, camera bracket bag, and a battery pad and miscellaneous things. As for the individual components that I'm using, I've got the usual Sony HS1177 camera using a 2.5mm lens, ZTW2206 V3 motors, Icon 30 amp SEFM ESCs, Motolab Cyclone Flight Controller, FR Sky XSR, and a 200mW VTX with push button channel changes and a broken intent. Starting with the arms, I filed down the edges of these holes to allow for the motor wires to wrap around easier since I'm putting the ESCs in the bottom. You can still put them on top if you want, but it's a little neater on the bottom and they're more protected. Also, don't forget to use thread locker on these motor mount bolts. I would cut down the motor wires a little shorter than I did here to leave a little more space for the arm bolts. I would recommend making sure that whichever ESCs you choose fit the width of the arms. These icons fit just right. Anything wider acts like a sail. I covered the ESCs with heat shrink, mounted them to the arms with 3M VHB tape, and then used a little more heat shrink. All pretty straightforward so far. Now for the PDB. It has an integrated 8 volt regulator to use with your VTX and FPV camera. It's only capable of 300 milliamps, so anything else either has to be directly plugged into the battery power or through a Palulu, which conveniently stacks right in these holes. Make sure you sand down the sharp edges on the sides so it doesn't cut into your battery strap. Now we're going to install these inset nuts onto the PDB. It's similar to the alien frames, but these require a bit more force. Use one of the carbon arms with the steel screw and washer on the other side to protect the PDB and pull it through. It's very tight and won't go anywhere. Might as well install the XT60 connector now too. I use really short wires and zip tie it to the bottom. Longer wires can risk getting cut by the edge of the pot. Now we can bolt together the lower plate, arms, and PDB. I'm using the medium length nylon bolts for the inner holes. The design of the arms makes these not as crucial to the integrity of the frame, so nylon is fine. You can use steel if you want to, since those bolts are also included. The bottom side of the PDB is all ground, so there's no need for any insulation on it. I'm just clearing the wires out a little bit and adding some heat shrink to help organize things. Go ahead and solder on the ESC power wires. Ground on bottom, positive on top. Once the grounds are done, you might as well install the battery pad down here too. So the camera and VTX wires can be wired to these 8 volt through holes here. You also have the option to install some pin headers in order to use a connector and make the pod a quick disconnect. If you do this, the pins will have to be at an angle so you don't hit the camera. I decided just to make a quick harness and direct wire it. Now solder on the power wires for the flight controller. The regulator isn't powerful enough to handle this along with FPV gear, so we're just going direct battery power. Onto the flight controller. I chose this model specifically because it has an onboard 5 volt regulator along with a nice problem free gyro. I've already attached the small wiring harness for the XSR receiver and hot glued it. The other wire is just for telemetry. Now I'm just tediously soldering on the ESC signal wires, and then cutting them down once completed. I also like to add a little bit of hot glue on these pads and also the ESC wires just for a little more security. I ran the ESC wires underneath, so I'm going to need two nylon washers on all four sides of the FC. If you run the wires on top, you can get away with just one. The hardware kit has longer standoffs too if you want to use those instead. All you need is enough space for the battery strap. And then just finishing up the flight controller by soldering on the power wires up top and tightening down the nylon nuts. I just plug in the XSR and I'm going to mount it by simply using some 3M VHB double sided tape and sticking it to the top of the FC. And for the receiver wires, you can just run these down along the sides of the arms or underneath them. Reception is perfectly fine. I'll tape them underneath later. This would also be a good time to add on a buzzer, capacitor, or whatever extras you have, since we're pretty much done with frame assembly. Now we can move on to the unique part of the build, the pod. Just a cautionary note about these camera bolt holes. Basically there's a possibility of micro cracks developing. The recommended fix is to take a soldering iron and apply heat for a few seconds to melt the edges slightly. Not too much that you enlarge the holes, but just seal the edges. I recommend doing this for all the small holes. I think the new ones are actually coming undrilled. Okay, now for the aluminum camera bracket. The edges on this are pretty sharp and it's tight fit, so it's a good idea to file down the edges a little bit. Just smooth it up. And for the side facing the camera, the kit comes with a small adhesive back to foam piece. This is to prevent vibrations from the camera. Apply it on the bracket and then trim the edges with the knife. 
This isn't the neatest, but it'll do the job. Now we have to remove the small screws from the back of the FPV camera and install longer ones so it will fit with the bracket. Use the longer 2x8mm screws for the HS1177. The Foxier Arrow will also fit, but you'll need longer 2x10mm screws which are not supplied. You can test fit the camera on the pod now, just pop it into place. I'm going to loosely install the bolts for the camera to line it up completely. Make sure whenever you use any hardware on the pod to always use either the fiber or nylon washers. Never put metal screw on plastic. Also, don't be a gorilla when tightening them down. Don't want to risk crushing or cracking it. I believe it supports around 30 to 50 something degrees camera tilt. You can actually just fly it around like it is now and cut it later if you want to test it. Once you pick your angle, mark on the pod where the lens sits. You only want to cut out just enough to have a clear view. If you cut out the whole flat area, you actually decrease the strength of the frontal area significantly. So don't go overboard. Now it's time to start talking about antennas. This is probably the most customizable part of the build, and there's many different ways to do this. I'll just show the most common ones. You have the option of simply drilling a hole and using a bulkhead connector, screwing it on the back, or shortening the antenna and running it out by the XT60 connector. You can also cut it down and piggyback it on the pod. If you do this, be careful of positioning as it might hit the props if it's too far back. You can just glue it down, or what some people were doing is drilling some extra holes and using zip ties to secure it. Once you decide what to do, it's time to start prepping the pod. Here I put down some masking tape and marked where to drill. Drilling is actually not recommended due to the aforementioned micro cracking issue, but I'm just drilling a small pilot hole with a rotary tool, so it should be fine. When drilling any type of plastic, make sure you don't go too slow that the bit grabs the material, and also don't go too fast so you melt it. Once finished, I'm switching out to a small grinding bit and just making the hole a little larger to fit the antenna. I'll be doing this outside since as you can see it makes a mess and it's just going to get worse. I'm going to go ahead and cut out the camera hole now too, since I already know what angle I'm using thanks to copying it from my 210. Same kind of process. For this one I used a small sanding bit instead to speed things up since it's a larger hole. This also makes a very large mess as you can see from the tool. If you want to follow the Bolt RC recommended way, or you don't have the fancy rotary tools, you can actually just use the soldering iron with a sacrificial tip. Crank up the heat and just melt through it. The pot is thin and it's easy. Make sure you have good ventilation though, it stinks pretty bad. Use a razor or something similar to cut off any excess material. The last two things you'll need is a hole for your VTX if you have one with the push button to change channels, as well as one for a USB port on the side. Also, make sure the back of your pot fits with the XT60 connector. You might have to trim it down. Once all of that is finished, you can go ahead and paint the pot if you want. Painting on the inside produces a nice glossy finish. I'm leaving this clear for now so everything will be visible for you guys. Now I can finally put the antenna on. This is the broken AM way I showed earlier with the small coax cable on it. I'm just going to glue it to the pod and then direct solder it to the VTX. For a tutorial on that, check out this great video from Dark Peak. He covers everything involved and it's a lot easier than you'd think. The only tricky part doing this with the Kraken is that the antenna is already in the pod. To attach the VTX to the pod, I use Ward 3M VHB double sided tape. It handles the temps no problem. And here it is lined up with the hole I made earlier for the button. Here's how much I trimmed out for the XT60. I rounded off the edges on all the corners too, as well as any areas that were close to the wiring to prevent rubbing. I'm just going to reinstall my camera real quick, again using fiber washers. You could have left it in this whole time if you want to do a test flight before you set the angle. So with the camera reinstalled, we're pretty much done with the pod. Go ahead and plug it in. Here's my clamshell opening system, works pretty good for me. Pins would be handy too. I also installed the battery strap already. Just slide it underneath the flight controller. Once the pod is installed, you won't be able to access it. It came with a red battery strap, approximately 175 millimeters in length. But be aware it's better to have a shorter velcro section than most small straps. So cutting down a 20 centimeter length strap actually works better if you need a replacement. Don't forget the zip tie here if you haven't done so already. At this point, everything is basically done. I like to go over with my multimeter and check for continuity basically checking for shorts. I also recommend adding some hot glue to secure the connectors for the RX, VTX, and camera. These always fall out for me. Before I close up the pod, I bound my receiver, loaded up Betaflight 3.0, and went through with BL Heli pass-through to set the motor directions. Make sure when you're doing this on the bench that the props are off and you're doing this either with a smoke stopper or a voltage limiter. Check out this BL Heli S noise though, so smooth. Finally, we can bolt on the pod. Use the titanium bolts with cone washer and lock nuts. 
Remember to use fiber or nylon washers on any metal touching the plastic too. It's actually easier to install these with the nut on the top side, but I'm a sucker for aesthetics. It takes a lot of wiggling with all the layers. Take care when tightening the bolts that you don't crush the plastic, but also check to make sure your arms are stiff and don't wiggle. All finished and ready to go. You can see on the side over here, well, it might be a little hard through the plastic, but there's a lot of room. Really easy to fit a capacitor, a beeper, a transponder, antenna, whatever else. No need to be intimidated by small space. Just to get an idea of weight, this one came in at 266 grams without props. I plan on using some heavy quad props, which will probably throw off the weight. And now that we're done, check out all the extra hardware that was in that bag. This is what I meant before by having all the parts for any configuration. Tons of spares too. And of course, here it is in action. Sorry, no DVR available, just ground side video. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Hit up the comments if you have any questions or check the thread on RC groups. Hopefully I'll have some more build videos soon. Maybe I'll post up a follow up after I customize this frame a bit. Later.